Are you ready to talk about the Twin City Opera House? Guys, we went on our second but first real ghost investigation in the scary city of Ohio. Dude, Ohio is scary enough, honestly. Yeah, there's a lot of cryptids in the uh, cornfields. That was my thought. What are you? <laughs> Why are you staring at me? Just it was Ohio. It's an interesting experience. People say Ohio is boring. It was boring, except for the Twin City Opera House. Well, this place that we went to, there it was like a super old, I don't know, like railroad city, village, town, probably town. Because there was just a whole bunch of, like, train tracks that just go off into, like, nothingness. <laughs> and Em had us stay in a literal cabin in the woods. Well, yeah, I was looking at with one of Anthony, with one of our ghost investigation dudes, and he was like, there's not a lot because it's kind of in the middle of nowhere. So, uh, how about this cabin in the middle of the woods? <laughs> I was like, oh, okay, great. <laughs> Literally, getting there with the car was a literal uphill fucking battle and then the cabin itself is just on a hill in the middle of nowhere you want to live there is pretty i do told me i do i would like to live in the middle of nowhere on top of a hill i told emily that hills with scary things that go to the (laughs) the haunted cabin in the woods we're gonna have two hills that are gonna look like butt Butt cheeks cheeks. (laughs) and i'm gonna have one house on one hill and i'll have the other house on the other hill and it's gonna be connected by like a slip and slide in between the butt cheeks of the hill yeah well we decided to go to this location because um well a it's our first one and it seems pretty chill because all of the like really really scary haunted places have really really dark scary things and this place is more like the stanley hotel where it's more human based spirits and they're like it's kind of like being in a different time like it's just like plays just playing over and over and over again from the past similar to how the stanley hotel is Yes, since Em and I have started doing this and doing a lot of reaction videos, whether it's Sam and Colby or just covering haunted places in general without one of us having previous knowledge, when we put our mediumship hats on, it's interesting because we talk about like residual hauntings versus active hauntings, and it is, it's like playback films of movies in like different eras, and that was happening a lot to us while we were there. Yeah, so that's why we went with this for our first one. Because uh, it's I'm a child. Really weird. Well, it's also really weird being physically there because people are like, people talk about how we get more information than mediums in the things that we're reacting to. They're like, well, how are they not seeing them if it's actually there? Mm-hmm. And it's because you're physically there, so your spirit guides are trying to protect you from the scary things that are there. Because physically being there is a lot. It is a lot. And that's what I told you. I was like, I don't want to go to scary places because us being there is going to be different than us remote viewing it from your back bedroom. Well, I realize that. But at the same time, people who are more rude and scary to the things that are there, like taunting stuff, go to these places and they're fine. Yeah, but that's... so. I can't say this with all due respect because it doesn't sound like there's all due respect, but that's like when you put someone that's dumb into a fighting ring and they just get punched in the face repeatedly and they're like oh doesn't affect them because they're not that smart sorry it's kind of what it's like you're like oh shit i'm gonna get hit in the face this is gonna hurt you know it's just not a it's not that big a deal it's fine you just gotta think it's that everything's fine and then everything will be fine i mean i was pretty scared i was pretty uh not anyways Well, I wasn't aware of what happened on the balcony, but I wanted to talk a little bit about Twin City because it was really funny. The day after we got done doing the investigation, we went back to have breakfast before we left. And this little old lady like got out of her car. (laughs) Oh my God. She could tell that we weren't from the area. Yeah, because- she stopped and was like, hey, do you go to the opera house? And we're like, please stop talking to us. <laughs> well, no, it was really cute because, I mean, obviously she's lived there her whole life because as soon as she walked she up to me- She literally pulled over to give us a flyer. 
out of her car and then got back in her car and drove away because she could tell that we weren't from the city. Yeah, well, when you're like, scary. standing in the middle of nowhere and the biggest dude in your group is taking pictures like a tourist and then an 87-year-old lady does a U-turn, screeches her tires in parallel parks in the yeah. side, like freaking Batmobile style and comes out with not a flyer, but a brochure. It was an entire like 10-page pamphlet about where we were at. So Gosh. they call it the Twin Cities because it's split in between a river. So there's a bridge between one city on one side of the river and then another city on the other side of the river. So each city has its own name, but collectively they call it the Twin Cities. So that's why it's the Twin City Opera House. But it's interesting because we learned about the history of the hotel afterwards. And no, I was in the tour, my dude. Yeah, I was not i was talking to a cricket that i named jiminy on the floor (laughs) the way that it worked was we decided that one of us would go on the tour in case something happened and one of us would stay behind and do nothing and wait for us to get back so they wouldn't hear about the history so we got a tour from i believe his name was sam yeah i think so and he went through all of the like creepy locations and told us about the stories that were there and the people that people see during their ghost investigations and stuff is there a giant monster behind me that looks like a sea monster is it like hunched over you yeah and it's like white and green and brown and looks like something from scooby-doo and it's like huge yeah yeah disgusting why why. (laughs) are you scared (laughs) i'm annoyed but maybe scared too Mm. no i think that thing's making you annoyed i don't know what that is yeah it like looks gross and icky and slimy anyways so (laughs) um (laughs) when they were doing the tour it was weird because it was like very validating for me because Liv normally does like psychic medium readings so she gets validation from like her clients but I don't usually get confirmation of things because I don't read people's like past loved ones so I'm telling this man about the things that I was seeing and I was seeing this woman because she was my tour guide. I forget what her name was, but she was one of the ladies that were like featured and she had this like auburn colored hair and she had this big poofy dress. And when this man asked me, he was like, what does she look like? And I was like, oh God, <laughs> I'm so nervous. It's going to be wrong. I don't know you. <laughs> so I'm like stuttering over my words. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah, there is this woman. She apparently is caught singing in the on the stage in the center. People will hear her sing. Oh, is she the one with the like white makeup and she actually does opera? Possibly. I don't know. I've never seen her with white makeup. Does she look like she's more country? Like glitzy country from the 1920s country? <laughs> like music she's in like a ballroom gown oh okay that's old time very different and she has curly like auburn colored hair the man says that she has red hair so i said she had brown hair because i was like uh it doesn't look like Liv's hair yeah (laughs) my hair's strawberry blonde not auburn my mom's hair is auburn so i was like is it brown (laughs) yeah kind of looks brown so yeah And I kept seeing people up in the balcony walking around and, like, looking over the balcony and seeing us. And then there was this little offshoot where you could get up onto the stage, like, the stairs onto the stage. And people were, like, peeking out from behind the corner there. And this man. No, like, there's, like, the door to get onto the stage. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's people, like, over around the corner of that. And he was like, I can tell that you're already seeing things. And I was like, yeah, what's with the weird door over there? (laughs) Why is there, like, weird things over there? Because I was seeing, like, a... I don't know what the right word is. Like, a usher guy? I was seeing an usher guy. Mm -hmm. And then I was also seeing, like, some weird shadow figure that was in that weird doorway. Yeah, because you weren't the only person that was seeing the shadow figure in that doorway. Yeah, it was wild. I because don't... our friends were seeing it. And I was like, I don't know why you're looking at that. It's changing. Yeah, <laughs> I did not see it, but they, everybody else did. Yeah, I saw it. It was like, it looked like a person and then it like morphed down into the floor. And oh. got scarier and scarier. And both of them, all three of them were just staring at them like, 
And I was like, they are not seeing what I'm seeing. There's no fucking way that they are. Yeah. <laughs> They're probably just seeing a shadow and <laughs> I'm seeing this thing get on the floor and like <laughs> crawl. Yeah. Gross. But like, they did okay. see it. Yeah, it was wild. So when you were on your investigation or not investigation, but on the our tour, tour, what else did you see? Hey Nissan, how do you get to the top? Calculating. Proceed to nineteen fifty nine. Take a hard left in East Africa at the 71 Safari Rally. Veer right for 19 off-road championships in the Baja Desert. Proceed towards Moab. Take the trail to Hell's Revenge. Include steep incline. Continue for the next million miles. Um, where to first again? 60 years, millions of miles, and the capability to take you anywhere. This is the new Nissan. Science proves your best sleep is vital to your mental, emotional, and physical health. The Sleep Number 360 Smart Bed senses your movements and automatically adjusts to help keep you both effortlessly comfortable. And it's temperature balancing, so you stay cool. So you're at your best for yourself and those you care about most. Life-changing sleep, only from Sleep Number. Don't miss our weekend special. The Queen Sleep Number 360 C2 Smart Bed is only $9.99. Plus free home delivery when you add a base. Ends Monday. To learn more, go to sleepnumber.com. Um, after that, we went to, I think it's called, like, the, the catwalk. On the, on the catwalk! Or the rigs. That's I what think I they call them the rigs, too. I nervously know. did the entire time. Yeah, they took us, he took us behind stage, and they're like, what do you feel here? And I was like, I feel like weird shadow things, because I watched this shadow person walk up the stairs to the catwalk up there. And I feel like there's, like, weird crawler things that walk on the stage. And he was like, uh, okay. And I was like, I don't know how you feel about weird dark things, but I'm going to tell you what I see. <laughs> yeah, he kept telling us that they were travelers. Yeah, well, he he meant they were travelers because there's portal up in the, the catwalk. In the catwalk! So yeah. it's not normally what people talk about when they go there. The, oh. like, regular spirits that are there. Oh, tell them what you were feeling when you were in the uh, car, on the car ride there. Yeah, the entire ride to uh to this opera house, I had this weird sensation of pain around my throat, which is pretty normal for me because I have like chronic headaches, so usually the back of my neck hurts, but I was sitting there thinking about it and I was like, "God, is this going to be one of those new things that happens to me that I'm going to have to deal with the rest of my life?" And then while I was thinking about that, this woman I heard this woman's voice to say, you know, maybe it's not you. And then I was like, Fuck. <laughs> mm. because before I like realized this, I was writing on a piece of paper because sometimes when we do our like remote viewing stuff, things happen too fast for me. So I try to write things down beforehand so I can keep up. So I wrote down on my piece of paper noose because I was like, this is cliche. I'm not going to say anything because I think that's weird until this woman was like this pain around your throat is not your pain and that's when I brought the camera out again and I was like do you feel like someone like had something around their neck and then Liv was like was it a man (laughs) so I get that feeling and they showed me again the like picture of me drawing noose on my notebook And when we were up there on the catwalk, the guide was like, there was this man that came up here that fell into the ropes because there's a bunch of ropes for the curtains and all of the like stage stuff. And a rope wrapped around his neck and he strangled himself to death. (laughs) And I was like, okay, that's cool. Because uh, my spirit guides have been teaching me about clairsentience and the fact that I do have clairsentience, but I just think it's my own pain. Yeah. yeah. The other thing, the other thing that was up there, there he talked about a portal that was up there, and there's a man that's associated up there. I believe he's one of the stagehands. But the I author, thought he was one of the directors, like the people that owned the. Or, like, ran the things. Possibly. Like, the stage director. Yeah. Stage hand. Stage director. Don't know what the difference is, but... He... He's usually up there, and they have, like, a... I don't know, like, an altar kind of thing, where they give them offerings of wine, red wine. It's like an old bookcase that they just put old red wine in. Yeah. So, he was up there, and then... 
they talked about the little children and there were these two little girls that they talked about that like to play with the flashlights and stuff like that so he was like you need to bring you need to make sure you bring like three of those twist flashlights but the weird thing is when we were up there he asked me what do you feel up here and because I saw that weird shadow figure walk up the stairs, I saw three shadow beings standing on the edge of the catwalk looking down over onto the stage. And then he was like, what do you hear over, like, because there are two sides where it's like a platform and then there's like a catwalk in between. What do you hear on the catwalk? And I hear people like footsteps and I feel like other people hear this residual footsteps of people walking back and forth. But yeah, that's all the stuff up in the rigs. 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 Or uh, <laughs> whatever that place is called. In the catwalk. Yeah, he showed us a whole bunch of other places, but the other main one was the sub-basement. And in the sub-basement, there is supposedly i forget what they they name all of their beings that are here supposedly there was this dark entity that was almost like a dark mass that apparently uh caused someone to levitate by their neck you didn't tell me that <laughs> jesus christ but oh it was charlie they call him charlie the entity charlie and he, the guide explained that he wasn't down there anymore. And, yeah, I don't know. But it was this dark being. It wasn't like a human spirit. It was like a poltergeist. Yeah, and someone apparently levitated supposedly by their neck. There was also this rocking chair down there that just magically appeared out of nowhere. I'm not sure why. Yes. You did not tell me that either. <laughs> <laughs> it just appeared one day. It was just there. I don't know why it's in a, a literal sub-basement. I need you guys to understand the sub-basement is, like, dirt. And then there's, like, pipes and electrical stuff all underneath it. So he's asking me, like, what do you feel down here? And I'm telling him, like, I feel this vibration. And then they're telling me about the dark cloud from the Lost series. And if you know what I'm talking about, it's, like, this dark cloud with, like, electricity that runs through it. And what they were getting at by showing me that is the dark entity feeds off of the electromagnetic frequencies that are in the sub-basement because of the pipes because of the electricity of the place and because of all the activity that happens above in the actual opera house it allows this manifestation of this dark thing to do scary things and people are scared of the sub-basement so manifestation scary thing i thought they put the rocking chair down there and that it just rocks by itself sometimes russell sat in that thing yeah i i am one of those people that i like don't believe it. <laughs> how does it just show up you didn't tell me that when we were there yeah i forgot because i was really nervous <laughs> i wasn't nervous about like the things that were happening i was nervous about getting content <laughs> <laughs> normal things to be nervous about <laughs> my job <laughs> um and then there's like a room off of this like sub basement where things are like closed off and it has like all the utility stuff in it i think and he's like that place has the worst energy and now they're telling me because it has the utility stuff in it so that's where all of the energy kind of sits but people describe seeing shadow figures in the back corner of this like closed off space and there was a tunnel that they so, like, closed off or something, too. Yeah, there was a tunnel in the one corner that closed off. They weren't sure what it was for or used for. Oh, no, they do. Yeah. The little old lady in the car even told us that came out to give I us mean, the brochure. I mean, the spirits... Oh, is that what she said? Because he didn't say anything about it. Maybe I wasn't listening. I don't think you were listening. Because he hmm. said that there used to be a tunnel down there and that it connected the Twin City Opera House to the hotel underground so that when people would come in to do shows they wouldn't have to walk above in the busy streets they could just go from the hotel to the opera house to do their shows if they were like celebrities or famous and it made it a lot easier to get all of the members of the crew to the opera house without going above the ground yeah but i also thought you told me it's something to do with the like 
Underground Railroad. Oh, yeah. No, they told me about that, That's too. That's what I was talking about. I think Kids, he... I don't think he said anything in, in regards to that. Stop looking at the weird There's things thing falling from the ceiling. Behind me. <laughs> I'm not. Is it real things falling from the yes. ceiling? Yes. <laughs> Just making sure they're not spiders. Spider season, okay? I would rather have a spider drop on my head I'm than good, just be next dude. to this goddamn crawl space well, in your basement. The thing that was behind you is gone. Disgusting. Why was it there? I don't know. That what the where the hell are you playing? The other side of the playground? What? <laughs> Em's really bad at doing the sayings. No, Anyways, I know what I'm talking about. Okay. Where do you play at? The other side of the playground. I like sandboxes. So, <laughs> Liv talked to a cr cricket during all of our tour things. Well, I was sitting in... The, okay, so it was nice because we got free popcorn and free drinks. And if we wanted to have soda or not soda, the candy, it was a dollar. So, I was like, Jay chilling up in the, like, place where they receive people and you pay for your tickets and get your poppy corn. And uh, then there was these ominous... Well, they weren't ominous. These really cool fucking stairs. I should stop swearing. That went to, like, the actual stage auditorium area because they show movies and stuff there now, too, instead of, like, live entertainment. I think they do live stuff, too, but it was set up for movies. Anyways, they got these big old doors and these stairs that go up to the doors that lead to the auditorium. And uh, I was Jay chilling there, and I was seeing these little girls that were running around and this old man who I think was, like, a janitor of some type because he had keys on his, on his, on his pants, you know, because janitors like to jingle jangle. And I was sitting on this stool with my feet up, uh, kind of on another stool that was higher than me. And you would think that I should sit in a stool that's higher and then put my feet on the lower stool. No, no, no. The sense that made to Olivia at like 10 o'clock at night was to sit on the lower stool with her feet on the higher stool. And this woman with like brown hair and who was very stern, I feel like she might have been uh, somebody that might have ran like the finances or administrative things of the building at one point came over and was like don't you put your feet on that counter and I was like they're not on the counter but they're close to it so I was getting goaded by an old woman in a Victorian-esque dress uh yeah you take up a lot of space I know Bradley also likes to say that I take up a lot of space which is a lot because he's a dude dudes take up a lot of space yeah as a child I was told that I needed to like cross my legs and not sit like a vagabond but now that I'm an adult, I choose to continue to do that. Anyways. Just take up a lot of space. <laughs> so we first start our investigation on the stage. We were talking to the little girls. Yeah, while well, they were talking, it was weird though, because when I was sitting downstairs, it's like I could hear all of the people following you guys. Yeah. Uh, from where I was and only a couple souls were talking to me but they told me about a fire and they kept telling me you're making me feel like the place used to be an orphanage or like a latchkey for children something like that I don't know it was weird and then when I asked Sam he was like no I don't think it ever used to be an orphanage or a place where they would like have kids or activities and I'm like well then why are there girls here so it was weird to me um and then the mayor guy which was also interesting because Russell told us, oh, we're going to the Twin City Opera House. And I was like, is there a mayor that's involved with this place? The mayor's office was literally attached by a wall next door to the place. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I never actually talked to the mayor when we were there, though. Although there was a dog. I asked him if there was a dog and there was a black cat, too, that was associated with the lady that told me not to put my feet on the counter. Interesting. And then I asked him if he saw a cat. And he's like, people say that they see a cat, but I don't really know about a cat. Or a lady that does admin work. And I was like, well, she's important, so you should know about her. So we started our investigation on the stage with two little girls. <laughs> Come here. Natural Balance presents a head-tilting, tail-wagging audio experience made for dogs. Want to play? <laughs> Good dog. This ad was scientifically designed to make your dog happy, just like Natural Balance dog food. Visit naturalbalanceinc.com to learn more. At the Home Depot, we have the tools to make your holiday magic in the easiest way possible. With our easy-to-assemble artificial trees, you can have a fully shaped, realistic tree up in your house within minutes. And you know your holiday look wouldn't be complete without our classic animated Santa that collapses for easy storage. 
get free delivery on over 2 million eligible items and you can spread holiday cheer to the whole neighborhood easily. The Home Depot. How doers get more done. There was a little boy too. Were we talking to the little boy though? Mm, I don't think so. You no. just talked about a little boy and you asked him and he said that he hasn't heard anything about a little boy. So He weird. said that people have said that there was a little boy though. He just doesn't know anything historically about a little boy. He only knows about the history of the oh, girls. No, he said that because I asked him before you were there. Okay. That's why he was like, oh, yeah, she already asked. Because I asked before you asked. Mm. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Did you see a little boy? No, you just were talking about it. Yeah, he's there so with I his asked, older brother. I asked, Liv, is seeing a little boy? Do you know anything about a little boy? And he said, no. And then you asked, do you know anything about a little boy? I see a little boy. And he said, oh, yeah, she just asked me. No, I don't I don't know anything about a little boy. That's how, that's how it went. Sorry. I was trying to ground myself because we got scared by these three scary things. <laughs> well, we got to start with the first, trees. first investigation. Okay. On the stage with two little girls. On the catwalk. Gosh. <laughs> we had those little cat balls. It was fun. Uh, and the flashlights. And then what is that thing? Boo Bear? Boo Buddy. Boo Buddy. They should call it Boo Bear. It's just a really... It's a bad name. Both are bad names. Because... It spells boob. Boob buddy. <laughs> You're welcome. That's all I can think about every single time. It's a bad name. You need a different name. <laughs> mm. I don't know. It's interesting. Oh, God. So, Gonna break the microphone. It's fine. We got a new ghost investigation equipment that is a little teddy bear, and it has a whole bunch of different things that it does. So it knows when things are touching it. It knows when uh things are changing temperature. And then it asks, like, little questions of weird things to children so that you can get EVPs and stuff like that. Do we have to go through that footage? Do you think we got AV EVPs on it? I don't know that it has an EVP recorder. You're just supposed to have an EVP recorder. Oh, recording. it's separate. It's not built in. It just asks the questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought, I thought it had a thing inside of it to get the things. We also just don't know really how to use it. So there's that. So if you guys know how to make it stop talking, that would be really great information. Yeah. <laughs> because it talks a lot. But anyways, we were on the stage talking to these little girls and they were sh looking at all of our equipment. So we started asking them questions with the twist flashlights, which they are really good at using. And then they got bored and used the cat balls. Maybe it was talking a lot because it was ask they were actually asking them a lot of questions. <laughs> And we just don't know. No, I think it's on a timer. Oh. Because it did it at my house. Okay. So, yeah. So, eventually, we went back. They told us that it was boring, what we were <laughs> doing. So, we went up to the rig because they have, like, toys for the little girls up there. So Which we were up, atrocious, by the way. Em and, I, em and I fixed it. They had candy up yeah, there. We Giving said children candy. We set up a tea party. <laughs> yeah, we made it look a lot better. And we asked them a whole bunch of different questions about themselves using the cat balls and the flashlights. And then Em decided to talk about the dark things that she thought were okay to talk about well, and scared the children. I asked them because I didn't know why I was seeing shadow people over there because I thought they were residual because they don't feel like people. They feel hollow. So I was like, who are the shadow people? Are they residual energy? And then they stopped talking to me. <laughs> and when they stopped talking to me, I, I was like, are they scary? <laughs> Mind you, the entire time we were here, it was very hot. Olivia was very hot. No AC. We're also up in the catwalk, which is the highest part of, like, the opera house. So very it would be thirsty. very warm. Thirsty. So after I said that, it... There's like this wind and we have the boo buddy there and the boo buddy just automatically says, I'm cold. <laughs> and I was like, oh no. Because after that, I started seeing the one of them standing behind me. Because every time I see them, I see the outline of a person, but their eyes kind of glow yellow every single time. And there's three of them. Yeah. Anthony started pooping his pants. <laughs> I, however was more freaked out that there was a portal behind me and like a weird bookcase with red wine on it for a man that may yeah, or may not have been- Yeah, you weren't seeing anything. I, no, literally, Anthony almost started pooping his pants. You almost started pooping your pants. I was like, hey was girls, cool. 
this tea party is set up for you. We got Twizzlers. And then everything got cold. And the Boo Buddy's like, it's cold in here. And I was like, oh, God, it feels so nice. This is great. <laughs> yeah, she didn't believe that they were actual, like, uh, shadow people there. Yeah, because I was not scared at all in any manner. I was like, but it's nice and chilly in here now. Feels good. Yeah, and then because the little girls stopped talking to us, because they, they stopped talking to us because their parents were like, maybe you shouldn't talk to them because they want to talk to dark things. <laughs> but at that point, I didn't know it was a dark thing. <laughs> I just thought it was a residual energy, and I wanted to know why I was seeing them. Can we just insert the fact that there are bats in this place, too? I fucking love bats. No. Apparently Liv doesn't because she just like cowers on the ground. I don't want them to go in my hair because if they do, they could get hurt and then I will get freaked out and then there'll probably be bat poop in my hair. And we were there until four in the morning and this was at like 11. Could you imagine having bat poop in your hair for four hours? So because <sighs> the little girl stopped talking to us, we started talking to the man that was up there. Again, I'm sorry. I forget what his name is. Uh, was it Robert? Maybe it was Robert. But he, we were like, we had this flashlight and he kind of like just stepped into the light so that we could see him. But he was standing behind us over by where his like wine was. And he started explaining things to us about the dark shadow people. And the portal. Because the girl, well, the girls were talking about the portal. Yeah. And then you were like, are the dark things associated with the portal? And they're like, I gotta go. Yeah. No, no one was talking. No one was asking questions. Yeah. So I asked questions. I was playing with the Twizzlers. I was making sure that the tea party was set up. and disgusting. Well, yeah, but that tea party looked like it was set up by boys, and then everyone forgot about it. Probably was. Well, yeah. It's atrocious. Got to fix it. You can't have a proper tea party if the bears are upside down and they got Twizzlers in their ears. So at that point, I think Anthony got scared because he kind of went outside. Yeah, he has. He's like, oh, man, guys, I got to go. And I was like, wait, it's finally cold up here. Let's chill for a second. It's it's nice. So we had to go down these stairs that looked like they were covered in Muppet fur. I'm sh- I am swear to God, they killed like four Muppets to carpet these stairs. Mm-hmm. And it's a good thing, though, because I think if they if they took the Muppet, the Muppet carcass off of the stairs, you would be scared by what the stairs looked like. They were like straight up and straight down. Mm-hmm. And I'm all for old things, but I was like, these are like a ladder <laughs> covered in Muppet fur. Well, they're just very like close together and they just kept changing and then it was dark and you can't see where they are. And there's are. bats trying to fly in your and hair. bats were the best part. Anyways, we go to the balcony where uh, things got real heated. God, because we went outside because Anthony needed a chill pill and then we're like, we need some soda and some popcorn. <laughs> no, I think we did that after we went to the balcony. I thought we did it twice. Because you got scared and then we went down. There. Yeah, the balcony was no joke. Well, we went to the balcony, and then Anthony came back and was like, those dark things, like, were really scary or, like, really got to me, so I had to go outside for a second. I forgot. Yeah. No, that- And that's when Mm -hmm. I started telling him about them, and we had- we were talking to uh, spirits that were up in the balcony, human spirits. Oh, it was cool. Wait, because we had the thingy, right? And then every time, the stuff would change. Motion detector music box. Yes. So we were talking to the souls that were there because we were sitting there and every like three minutes or so, Mm -hmm. there was like a different show playing. So you could see a whole bunch of people file in and then a whole bunch of people file out. And each time they filed out, the uh, music box started going off. Yeah, but it was weird because it was different productions in different times. Yeah. Yes. So Em and I were perceiving while sitting in the seats on the balcony, different eras of people visiting this place to see different shows the old couple were my favorite yeah like we were sitting there and i was like there's this man sitting next to me and he has blonde hair and he's super nice and then three minutes later there were this old woman and this man and this woman was like in a fur coat and had like this cute little hat on and she was like super old with gray hair she was telling me that she was like a part of the town like the, the town that it was named after what is the town named after it wasn't Dude, just twin know. city i can't remember because she told me what her last name was and it was like the name of the town and i didn't realize it until after when i was talking to sam about it but yeah they were a part of different time periods so the place itself was basically like replaying these shows over and over again and these souls would use the portals to come in and watch the shows and because time works differently than it does here, 
the shows would play in this kind of like cycle of about three minutes. It's McConnell. She was telling me she was Mrs. McConnell. Oh, because it was in McConnellsville. Yeah. Yeah. And it was interesting because she's like the mom of the guy that the town was named after or something. (laughs) Something like that. Anyways, continue. So while we were up there, Anthony, like I said, comes back and he was like, sorry, I had to leave because like I was really scared about the dark things that you were talking about because you looked scared and I looked scared. So I had to go outside for a second. And then so when I started talking to him about the scary thing that I was seeing up there and because we're using this music box and trying to talk to the souls that were up there, um, the music box started playing faster than it is programmed to do so it was in double time like if you take four four and then cut it into two four yeah and then you had that wind feeling again yeah and i could see the one that was standing on the other side of the music box the one that was on the other side of the balcony and then the one that was over on the other side by russell (laughs) and i was not fucking okay because it was a goddamn triangle of not okayness yeah so Liv was trying to press her energy out around us so that they would stop making the music box go off which was funny because it would go off and then she would lose concentration and it would go off again yeah so every time i was able to push my energy out far enough it would stop and then they were talking and i was trying to focus on not having them talk because when they talked it would bring me back to feeling fucking yeah. fury like just absolute god awful fear talking about what i was seeing up there yeah and then when I would lose focus and get fearful again, it would immediately start going in goddamn two four time. Yeah, and I've really cool. not been that scared in a long time. It was really cool. It was not cool. And then there's fucking bats. Yeah, that's when Liv was like, "I think we need to go outside. I'm scared. I need to go hug a tree." So she touched a tree for twenty minutes while we drank pop, and then we Ate came popcorn. Back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was interesting. That's when I asked the guy when the dude that had the accident in the ropes died. And I was like, was it the 70s? And he's like, wow, you guys really are mediums. And I was like, thanks. Just wait until we go down into the sub-basement and tell you about the gnomes. Oh, yeah. Or the uh, dwarfs. They were dwarfs. (laughs) Yeah, because I was like, just so you know, those dark things that you see on, on the catwalk are not time travelers or whatever you want to call them it was interesting because it wasn't until the next day that i tried to figure out like more about why they were there and who they were doing stuff with or whatever and they gave me a feeling of like there was three bad guys in the town at one point and these are kind of like the manifestations of the badness of these people well you told me that they were see no evil hear no evil speak no evil yeah that, well, that's what the kids told me. Oh, gotcha. Because you. You, you were like, can you ask the kids why they're so scared? And that's the answer they gave me before running away again. Yeah. Yeah. That was a <laughs> child's explanation. Got you. Yeah. So, scary. That's cool. So, the basement that you made me go into with the yeah. flapper ladies. We went into the basement because, uh, well, okay, the basement is the scary place with all of the, like, weird electrical portal poltergeisty things. Well, that's the sub-basement. The basement basement is where the people got ready, right? I mean, I guess that's what you're talking about. Yeah, there was a guy that was talking about the piano. (laughs) I guess there's not a lot going on in there because we were trying to do like spirit box stuff in there and a woman just came up to me and was like, people don't normally do stuff in here. So you might want to (laughs) move. Yeah, well, I was (laughs) was doing the SS method, right? Yeah. And I was seeing a lot of like the residual things kind of like. Yeah, you were just literally picking up conversations of people getting ready for the shows yeah and that's why they weren't talking to us so that's why that woman came up to me and was like you might want to (laughs) move no but it was cool though because i was like getting to see what they were doing even though my eyes were closed interesting yeah well you didn't say (laughs) yeah you just said what you were hearing yeah because that's what you're supposed to do in the access method i know but it didn't really make sense oh i was literally seeing the different timelines timelines of people getting ready which was really fucking cool. Like when we were upstairs and watching people file in and out to watch movies, it was like that, but downstairs where people got ready. There was ladies ladies in like boa, whatever thingies. There was a guy that was talking about how he used to play piano there. Country music dude. This like jazz band. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, what is it called? Barber quartet type stuff. Mm-hmm. It was cool. <laughs> and then you're like, let's go to the sub basement. And I was like, no! So we went to the sub-basement, and that's where the weird scary thing is. 
<laughs> and that's where Liv was on the floor because there was a bat. <laughs> I don't understand. They're in the rafters, and then they're in the basement. How yeah, do they it's go? It's dark and cold. But how do they all go from the basement, the sub basement, to the an rafters? Old building. You think they use the tunnel? There's multiple <laughs> bats. <laughs> I know. There was like four in the rafters, and then like three down in the sub basement. You should tell people what the dark thing was talking to you about. I don't remember. No, you do. Do I? That it tells people it's manifestation of fears? It manifests the scary things? Well, it was telling you scary things like that rocking chair. Oh, because we've done stuff on the devil's rocking chair. So it was telling me things about the devil's rocking chair and things about Annabelle and stuff like that. Yeah, because Russell say, uh, Russell's one of the people that we are doing the ghost investigations with. He sat in the rocking chair as we were doing the... Uh, um, We were doing flashlights down there. And I had other things, but the only thing that was really working was the flashlights. So he sat down in the chair and Liv said that the dark thing was talking to her about it. Yeah, and you didn't tell me that it just magically appeared one day like fucking Lucky Charms. Well, aren't you glad that I didn't tell Yes, now? <laughs> I, but if you did, I would not have let Russell sit in that thing. And I don't understand I how the, the, the whole time we were at this place. You think it's place. associated to a woman? No. No? It's too new. What do you mean it's too new? The Where did it come chair. from? Where did it go? Something, something, cotton eye Joe. Um, I don't know. There's a cloud behind you talking to you, so you're going to have to see through the cloud. Disgusting. I'm not Sorry. talking to clouds. <laughs> well, it's around you. It's disgusting. So just so you know, it's going to try to lie to you. <laughs> well, yeah. But then the rocking chair itself was new, so I don't know where it came from. I don't know. I feel like a man moved it. Do that with what you will or don't. <laughs> yeah, Why are you staring at me like that? Talking to things and this like one or two foot tall man that was like chubby comes forward and starts <laughs> touching our EMF reader. And I was like, this is interesting. I've never seen a creature that looks like you before. And I look over and in this sub basement, there's a whole bunch of these like support holes holding the basement up and you can see like uh, I don't know like five to ten other little eyes peering around these <laughs> little poles and I was like oh my god there's so many of them <laughs> yeah well well we had the two we had the two flashlights set up one over by Russell on the floor and then the other one was set up on like the stone or something next to over by you and the thing that was over by Russell was the dark thing trying to talk to us. And oh, then cool. the other flashlight was the dwarves. Yeah, they tried to, they, we had an EMF reader in the middle. And it was going off because we've never seen it go off before. Yeah, and the dwarves <laughs> were really cute. And I was like, okay, I see the scary thing and it's over by Russell. And I'm, keep them. everybody's talking to it. But then the other one was the dwarves. And I was yeah, like, oh, we're, we're like, going to talk to the dwarves. There, I think there's a goblin talking to us. And I was like. They started showing me uh it's the snow white and the seven the dwarves. snow white and the seven dwarves and i was like are dwarves a thing yeah and then <laughs> the they flashlight like, turned on fey beings for rocks and you were like yes and i was like a what <laughs> yes and then the flashlight was turning on while i was answering questions and em was asking them because the entire sub basement is carved out of sandstone yeah because of that tunnel too because they were showing me the tunnel being carved out mm -hmm. and they are the keepers of the tunnel yeah. Because that's when you started talking about the uh, underground man, railroad. Yeah, because there was a man and a black woman that was there. And the black woman was, like, very important in the town. And I feel like she might have done things for the underground railroad and the man helped her. Yeah. Or they so, were, like, a team in some way, even though they weren't, like, directly related in business. They kept the structural integrity of the tunnels. Or the tunnel. It was interesting. Yeah. They liked cho They wanted chocolate chip cookies. <laughs> Yeah, you ask them because people give weird offerings in this place for, like, Robert and the children and stuff like that. Yeah, I was like, if the children can have Twizzlers and a tea <laughs> party set up and Robert... What, what do you guys want? You want cookies? Literally. And like, yes. And it's hilarious because I got home and was talking to Bradley and I was like, I think we talked to the Keebler elves of Twin City, Ohio. <laughs> but they were like, we don't want them to, like, sit out because then we have to clean that crap up, you know? Yeah, it was really funny. So I was like... 
it, I think we blew Sam's mind when we went up there and was like, we have to tell them that the dwarves want cookies. Or he didn't cookies. believe us either way. I Well, I, no, either way, his mind was blown because he was freaked out or weirded out or any th- other type <laughs> of, I don't know, adjective. Well, first we told them about the people that, like, tracks with his stories and stuff like that. And then we come back upstairs and they're like, do you know there's dwarves in your sub basement? <laughs> do you know the muffin man? <laughs> And they so, want chocolate chip cookies. Whatever that goes for for people who do ghost investigations, if you think we're crazy. Yeah. Anyways, it was funny. But I asked him if there was a fire in there, too. And he was like, yeah, there was a fire. And I was like, that's weird. I don't like it. So this was one of our first investigations. And we are planning a second one. And the second one is going to be... uh in october october and we are planning on doing a live stream from the location because we reached a patreon goal so if you guys are interested in our first ever spooky live stream because after that we plan on doing a spooky live stream on thursdays the time might be inconsistent because we're trying to figure out reading schedules and whatnot but we want to kick it off with our first live stream being at a haunted location. And that's going to be probably October 23rd, if you guys are interested in checking that out. And when I say probably, it might be like in the morning. So it's either the 23rd or the 24th because my brain hurts. Your sock says grr. So if you guys are interested in that, more details are to come. But thank you to our patrons, because without you, we wouldn't have reached this Patreon goal. And if you're interested in joining Patreon, there'll be a link in the show notes to check it out, because you can uh, get in on all of the super secret fun stuff that we put on Patreon. And uh, because of Patreon, YouTube, our listeners, watchers, subscribers, and everyone else that likes our sidekicks and are our sidekicks, we both have been able to quit our job! Wow, this is the first time Liv has talked about it, you know? I know. I feel like this is a good one to talk about it with, (laughs) you know? Because I've only been stress sweating for the last year and a half of my life about it, and I'm continuing to stress sweat today. You know, the usual. It's a good time, but we're working on it full time now, so our Patreon content will be a lot better, hopefully getting better. Not that it isn't better, but we'll have a lot more time to put away and add cool stuff. We'll just have more stuff to it. (laughs) Yeah, more stuff cooler stuff awesome stuff and you get the discord server to talk with 301 other people just like you it's probably different now because this is gonna happen in the future yeah there's probably more than 300 plus people to talk on the discord server including us because we're on there now i don't have more time to talk to everybody on there when you ask questions too so it's exciting But without further ado, we would like to thank our Patreons because they've made it possible for us to sit here and talk about spoopy things to you. And I'm sure they would be more than happy to become best friends with you as well. Beth Ann, Fair, Maria, Haley, Indra, Faith, Alex, Alex, Caitlin, Argila, I think it's Argelia, 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 Sasuke, underscore magician. I like that one. Sierra, Lori, Mercedes, Christy, Terry, Christina, Sky, Mary, U.S. Dutch Kitty, Sheba, Calloway, Elise, Stephanie, Jay, Kiana, Tiger, Lily, Chloe, Kaylee, Camilla, Melissa, Kiosha, Vanessa, Natalie, Juan, Gracie, Michelle, Mia, Joshua, Miranda, Veronica, Abigail, Parker, Brenda, Jennifer, Brianne, Brian, Lauren, Little Universe, Shun, Wyatt, De- DeVille? We're just going to call you Wyatt. Esther, Brianna, Salvador, Hannah, Alex, Dalton, Rhea, Natasha, Tiana, Lizzie, Izzy, Calla, Kat, Sydney, Ariana, Kate, Ashley, Anna, Paisley, Paula, Sharon, Melissa, Hannah, Raggle, Maggie, Diana, Catherine, Tuesday, Tessa, Sarah, Cole, Mama Lama, Danielle, Susie, Aziza, Lisa, Charlotte, Caleb, Logan, Megan, Allie, Leslie, Danielle, Jason, Practical, Sapphic, Samantha, Jay, Mackenzie, Angelina, Emily, Justine, da, 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 da. Z, Kathy, Ashley, Veronica, Aubriana, Surly, Joseph, Haven, I is Duck One. I thought you were videotaping me again. Eureka Havoc, Reek Hitch Rick, which is interesting. So Rec, I think it's Rec. Baby Chim Chim, Gibby, TMQ927, Danielle, Lexi, Petra, Liam, Jay, Evie, Pamela, Elizabeth, Lucas, the Spider Fanatic, Caitlin, 
Taryn, Claire, Jasmine, Emily, Lola, Cora, Keely, Lacey, Awkward, Issa, Gentari, Gentare, Gentare, Gentra, Ashley, Lanita, Kara, Sandrin, Presley, Emmy, Kira, Jennifer, Amanda, Paige, Maggie, Rena, Samantha, Clarissa, Laura, Cherish, Charlie, Ashley, Brittany, Miss Alice, Forgetting Oblivion, Nelson, Sarah, Ashley, Sarah, Jade, Angie, Julie, Colleen, Synth, Sherry, Hannah, Ryan, Amy, Raquel, Isabel, Tasha, V, Fanny, JCLO, Leslie, Shelly, Grisha, Jay, Danielle, I think it's Donnelly, Donnelly, Jasmine, Julie, Brittany, Paige, Marin, Christina, Christopher, Sarah, Jasmine, again, Ooh, there's two Jasmines. Only one has a, a Z spelling. Connor, Alicia, Vanna, Amber, Sitali, C- Joylin, Paige, Brooklyn, Courtney, Caillou. I struggled with that one last time. Rita, Alana, Abril, Aki, K- Karina, Surya, Sergio, Katya, Asteria, Stephanie, Gaymeyer, Brooke, Lee Tao, M, Kayla, Ashley, Catherine, Dallas, Sarah, Alisa, Gannon, Veronica, Cynthia, Chris Von Kleist, Emily, Meredith, Jim, Lindsay, Beth, Ashley, Annalie, Tara, Rosie, Brandy, Skullstorm, Agaharadas, Tiara, Hazel, Marcy, Mia, Isabel, Rosara, Megan, Faith, Jessica, Yassi, Glow, Francesca, Amba, Brooke, Kaylee, Brooke, Ellie, Mia, we're so close, Flavende, Leanne, Ocarona, Liliana, Anya, Abby, Kayla, Sarah, April, Ashley, Cassie, Joanne, Keisha, Helen, Natalie, Alec, Sarah, Amanda, Stephanie, Tuna, Izzy, Katrin, Super Aru, Alexa, Caitlin, Shareholder, Sophia, Bria, Katie, Leanne, Bees, Brittany, Kendall, Shandy, Riley, Naz Otaka Suma. Otaku Suma. Yeah. Instead of Korean. I'm trying really hard. Miana, Liliana, Jay, Lacretia, Brianna, Kristen, Kima, Samantha, Vicky, Erica, Ian, Vanessa, McKenna, Cindy, Kylie, Mev, Trinity, Cass, Anthony, Violet, Peyton, Mac, Jenny, Laurel, Bradley, Sandy, Nas, Sherry, Sushi, Anita, Caddy, Katie. I'm so sorry. Katie, Charles, Holly, Krista, Abby, Malake. If you guys like this content and want more, you should like, subscribe, whatever you do for podcasts. And if you're on Apple or a place in which you can leave a review for our podcast, give us a review. If it's not a nice one, keep your meanness to yourself. No, Um, just give us dad jokes. (laughs) Yeah, we want dad jokes because we're going to read the best ones in our Apple Apple podcast and other review podcast thingies. Are you going to read the duty head one? Because I think it's hilarious. I don't remember if this is the duty head one. Well, okay, guys, listen. This this person gave us a five-star review, but the title says duty head. Oh, they just said, love your podcast, epic content, going to forever be a fanboy. Yeah. Or something like that. But the title of a five-star review saying duty head is hilarious. Yeah, because we call someone a duty head in our podcast. That's why it's hilarious. (laughs) Because you would think that that someone sucks, you know, but it's also confusing because it's a five-star review, but you're also using duty head, you know, you know, you know. Yeah. No, if you like whatever we said, if there was something funny that we said, also quote that in your your five-star content podcast review but anyways we have one other dad joke that was in our apple podcast review of dad jokes and it was uh the heading was a ghost emoji and this is this is the 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 joke Mm -hmm. did you hear about the chameleon who couldn't change color they had a reptile dysfunction gosh i need to label these yes (laughs) that was by what the hails H A L E S S S S S. Only three S's. I think I did four. But thanks. What the hails? I hope your chameleon gets better. Is there a pill for that? I don't think so. I think they're always going to be a reptile. <laughs> <laughs> you just like kiss your, your chameleon one day and he turns into a prince. It would still be a reptile. Well, now he's a. Oh, you. A you cold mean- blooded killer. <laughs> Sorry. That's funnier. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> okay, we're going to record another podcast, so see you in that one. We don't know what's going to be or when it's going to come out, but that's the mystery. Are we your meta sidekicks? So are you going to bring your weird, sticky, tall demon guy to our next podcast? The one that looks like the monster? Yeah. Monster!
I don't want to. Is he still there? I thought he was gone. What do you mean? Don't give me that look. Hey, Nissan, how do you get to the top? Calculating. Proceed to 1959. Take a hard left in East Africa at the 71 Safari Rally. Veer right for 19 off-road championships in the Baja Desert. Proceed towards Moab. Take the trail to Hell's Revenge. Include steep incline. Continue for the next million miles. Um, where to first again? 60 years, millions of miles, and the capability to take you anywhere. This is the new Nissan. Come here. Natural Balance presents a head-tilting, tail-wagging audio experience made for dogs. Want to play? <laughs> Good dog. This ad was scientifically designed to make your dog happy, just like Natural Balance dog food. Visit naturalbalanceinc.com to learn more.